down a thousand times. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'm standing right here. Demons all around, but I ain't got no fear. All right, guys, we got a massive episode here. We are talking about the 10 biggest busts for fantasy football 2023. These are 10 big named players. I mean, huge name players that I will be avoiding and you should be avoiding as well. Let your idiot league mates draft these guys. Let them go away. There's better players to draft. I know who they are, and I'm going to make sure you guys get the optimal players, right? That's why I created my 60-round draft solution. So, listen... Avoid these players, big busts, do not draft, do not, do not, do not. I'm going to go over the 10 players. I've got them listed right here, and I'm going to explain why not to draft them. So there's significant reasons behind why you got to stay away from these players, okay? That's why I'm wearing the no sheep shirt today. We don't want any of these players on our team. Let the sheeps just draft them. And last year, I was pretty good at picking up players to avoid. DeAndre Swift was one of them. He was a top eight running back. So... I'm going to give you guys some credibility. I'm going to show you my credibility before I start going in this list, list so you know what I'm talking about. DeAndre Swift last year, I said, stay away. Everybody had him as a top eight, and they didn't apologize. Still no apology, guys, for their terrible analysis last year. Everybody, every magazine, consensus ranks, had DeAndre Swift as a top eight back. I said, no, 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 no. Years to wow us. Where I, want. I went into a thousand reasons why. Rashad Penny last year. Everybody said Rashad Penny. I said, nope, go for Kenneth Walker. He's a second round pick. Penny will get hurt. Penny, Penny sucks. Everybody that got 60 rounds avoided him and did well. Thumbs up. Okay, I'm just giving I could go on forever. Cooper Cup. Well, Joe, you can't predict injuries, but yes, I predicted predicted a decline. Enough so that my cons- people that got 60 rounds, the guys that listen to me, avoided Cooper Cup and the catastrophic failure that he was last season. Also, Jonathan Taylor, I said decline's coming. Everyone had him as a number one running back. I go, nope. Very unlikely he'll duplicate that. We saw this two years in a row with Priest Holmes. 2002, 2003, he was the only running back to come back two consecutive years and finish on top. Won't happen. Decline happening. Now he declined way more than I predicted. But either way, I faded him. Told you to go for a guy like Derrick Henry. And they were sleeping on a guy like Sick while we got him in round two. So I could go on and on and on and on about how, you know, Dalvin Cook last year, right? Everybody told you round one. Busted. Finished 11th amongst running backs. He was a top two, top three, top four pick. So I could go on and on about this consistently, right? Guys, they slept on. They slept on Damian Pierce. They slept on Tyler Algier. They slept on Kenneth Walker. They slept on Amon Ross St. Brown, who was in the fourth round. Now he's drafted round two. Right now, everybody was, you know, I tell you, get Amon Ra last year. And on and on. Are these good enough? Is this enough examples? I can keep going. The point I'm trying to make here, guys, when I tell you these guys are due for a decline. Now, all 10 of these guys, are they going to bust? Probably not. But based on their ADP, a majority of them will. At least one, two, or three will. And if you can avoid that, if you can dodge that bullet, good on you. You've done you know better than half the people in your league. So 10 players here, guys, that I really want you to avoid. I got to give you guys context. Some people say, get right to it. No, there's a lot of talking. This is part of the conversation we need to have. All right, This is very important stuff in your success. All right, guys? So before I get into this, guys, I want you guys to be aware of something huge. Uh, there is something that now it's called, it's a digital draft board, draft board, fandraft.com forward slash FFC. Head on over there right now, and you guys can enhance your draft experience. All right, don't have your typical sheep draft. You know, do it right this year with fandraft.com. Now, the cool thing about this, guys, you get multiple board displays. It's a digital draft board. It's custom logos and owner images. You can upload them. Team walk-up songs, a customizable draft clock, streaming uh, pick ticker, uh, voice announcer, and so much more, guys. And if you're if you draft, you all draft from home, your entire league, you can still have this draft board, and it even looks better in person. Digital draft board, fandraft.com forward slash FFC. You, the code you want to use is FFC10. Go create an account so you're all set. If you're the commissioner, if you know the commissioner, make him aware of this right now. Fandraft.com. Code is FFC10 to save 10% on your pro account. Go do that. And secondly, grab the 16-round draft solution. Sleepers, breakouts, optimal players draft each round. You will crush your league, guys. Light years ahead of the competition. Grab 60 rounds. Secure the solution. Secure the championship. I've linked it below. Or head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. It's right on the homepage or under programs, all right? Let's dive into these players. Here we go. The first player, guys, that will bust this year that I am avoiding. And again, like I said, disclaimer, there's a chance that these guys do not bust. 
But there's a high probability that what goes up must come down. I look at all the variables. I look at the depth chart. I look at the situation. I look at the tile. Look at the, the injury history. I look at every single analytic and data point on these players. There's a ton of research that went into this list. This isn't like Joe doesn't like Christian McCaffrey because he models. This is like, no, there's reasons for it. So the first player here that I'm personally avoiding is Christian McCaffrey. And if you don't avoid him, that's fine. It's up to you. It's up to you guys to make that decision. But if, if there's one reason that I'm avoiding him. The fact that he's so expensive. This is not a young guy. This guy came out, what, in 2017 as a, play, a rookie? Like he's not, he's not, he's like six years in, right? Five, six years in. He's not young. He's still young, but he's in running back years. He's got some mileage, right? And he had a good year last year. 244 attempts, 1139 yards, you know, eight touchdowns on the ground, a bunch of receptions. But here's the thing. Very, very, very expensive. I'm not paying it. Okay, aside from the fact that he finished on he finished number two last year amongst running backs, there's no way he's gonna finish on top. This is a direct copy and paste. Yet again, there's so many other guys that could supersede him. Jonathan Taylor bounced back, by Jan Robinson bounced, uh, you know, rookie emergence, right? There's so many other guys that Derrick Henry could have a pinnacle last hurrah year, right? We you know, Saquon Barkley could get paid incentivized and really tear it up this year. There's so many other guys that could surpass him that just for the fact that I know he won't finish on top again is a good enough reason. So the, the fact that he's expensive, the fact that in 2020 he played, guess how many games, guys? I've got, I'm holding my finger up. If you're listening in the car, I'm holding up the big three here. He played three games in 2020. So injury is there, you know? And it's, okay, well, Joe, that was one year. How about 2021? Guess how many games he played, guys? Played seven games. So I look at it like this, right? I look at, okay, Injury prone, 2020, yeah, maybe it was a fluke. 2021, okay, 100% is injury prone. He played 10 games in two seasons, okay? Then last year, he did well. Oh, he did well, okay. Well, that was his last hurrah. Good for him, congratulations. He's already been paid, he's been incentivized, he's good. I'm not sold on him. Elijah Mitchell only played, what, like five games last year? He's going to be good to go. New quarterback situation. We don't even know what's going on with the quarterbacks. Probably going to be Purdy. Um, either way. I don't trust the situation. I don't like him. I don't care for him. I'm not paying the price. So to me, he's going to definitely bust on his ADP. You, Joe, you can't predict injury. Joe, you can't do it. I'm predicting injury. Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. He does not finish the season, and you guys will waste a first overall or second overall pick this year. I can almost assure you, and if I don't, there'll be a decline. Either way, all these red flags. I'm seeing these flags, guys, right? Do I need to play the Kinshipsa song? I got to play the Kinshipsa song here. Because this is a direct copy and paste. All right. We're going to roll the Kinshipsa song into the second player because, again, this is a copy and paste. I love this part. We hate on the counselor. We are the Kinshipsa. I got it. I'm actually, I'm actually bringing back Connor. Connor is not here in the studio. I actually left them upstairs now connor is a is a is a real sheep but some people think he's a puppet but it, it, i gotta bring him on to the show uh we're gonna do another segment with him but he's been in the house and you know the kids want to play with my you know sheep uh puppet and you know he's been around the house and the wife i put him on the dining room table should get this sheep out of here he's causing a lot of problems he lies to you every single year anyway you might see an appearance from connor that can sheeps this People, I think he's real, but people think he's a puppet. Again, the kids were throwing him around, and you know, I got two kids, and they're just I'm like, guys, you cannot hurt Connor. Okay, Connor is part of the show. Anyway, let's get let's get let's get back to this. But I just want to tell you, these guys lie to you. Is the whole point. That's why I got to have a sheep puppet on the show because I got to get my point across. So the second player here is Austin Eckler. Okay, number two here, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. Just for that, I don't. Why, Joe, why don't you trust him? He's been consistent because he was a backup for years. Well, Joe, that was years ago. He's a backup to Melvin. Those days are gone. Yes. But if if the Chargers didn't see him as a backup, he's 28 years old, right? 27, 28. He's 28, I believe. They would have paid him a mega contract. They would see him as a young, dynamic running back that's got a ton of upside. They don't see that. They 100% don't see it. That's why they paid him, what, $2 million to stay on, a bunch of incentives. But he's sitting as the number two running back right now. Last year, finished as a number one running back. Jeez, guys, copy and paste much? You know, copy and paste? Like, I'm not going to play the whole song. You guys get it here. But here's the deal. I looked at some numbers here. 
127 targets. That put him number 17 amongst wide receivers in target share. He was tied with Mike Evans last year in reception target, just in targets. He was ahead of Olave. He was ahead of Waddle. He was ahead of Tyler Lockett. He was ahead of Higgins, T. Higgins. T. Higgins had 109 targets last year. These are just some example wide receivers that Austin Eckler had more receptions from. Joe Lombardi was the offensive coordinator. He is gone. They brought in Kellen Moore now, okay? So he was, I believe, the quarterback's coach for the Cowboys. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. You know, former quarterback was, is the quarterback's coach for the Cowboys. Now he's the offensive coordinator for the Chargers. So in comes a new offensive coordinator. You've got uh, Herbert now, who's in a contract year. They drafted Quinton Johnson, who I absolutely love as a sleeper this year, right? Less checkdowns, coming off a pinnacle year. He's been like Cinderella season the past couple years. There is zero way but down for Austin Eckler this year. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. Now, what favors Eckler is the fact that they didn't go out and draft a running back early. So this favors Austin Eckler. There is some lingering free agents still around. The time of this recording, Dalvin Cook got an offer from Miami. He might end up there, but there's still a couple other guys, maybe a Kareem Hunt out there. There's a Zeke Elliott. I mean, who knows? But they didn't go out and draft another running back. So that works in the favor of Austin Eckler. Mind you, he's been consistent. He's been strong. He's been running hard. I'm personally avoiding for the fact that he's coming off this pinnacle year, massive amount of targets. I'm, I'm staying away. It's up to you. If you want to invest a second round, second overall, sorry, not second, first overall, second overall pick on Austin Eckler, go ahead. That's up to you. I'm not doing it. Decline coming. This guy got so lucky based on situation. Not going to happen again. All right? Third, third guy I'm avoiding here. Now, this guy could have a good year, but I'll tell you why he's due for a major decline, okay? Third guy I'm talking about is Devontae Adams. Now, Devontae Adams is great talent. There's no denying it. This guy is entering his not first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth season, tenth season. There is no way I'm drafting a wide receiver, I don't care who you are, that's entering his tenth season, he gets a significant downgrade at the quarterback position. Now, you could tell, guys, I've done a lot of homework on this. Who's throwing the quarterback? It's Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, what is, now you're asking, what has Jimmy Garoppolo done? And these are the things that I look at when I'm creating my 60-round draft switch. There's a lot of work that goes into, into it. This isn't just like copy and paste. Are you seeing, you're going to see right now, but are you starting to see the difference, the analytical stuff that I go through? that kind of brings out all of this potential bust material. So all right off the bat, second round expensive, coming off a pinnacle year, likely that he's going to decline. He had 180 targets. That's the most targets he's ever seen in his entire career. Why did he see that? Now, everything has a reason, right? He saw that because Hunter Renfro and Waller were hurt last year. He got the opportunity. Again, pure luck that he was able to be a beneficiary of injuries. Similar to Eckler to that injured wide receiver core last year. A lot of checkdowns, a lot of targets, right? Same with Devontae Adams here. Now, again, 180 targets. I look back at Jimmy G in his pinnacle year. Jimmy G had a great season back in what? Was it 2019? I believe it was, Okay. 27, I think it was 2019, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. That was his best year, just under 4,000 yards with 39.78. So even in his best year, Jimmy didn't throw over 4,000 yards. That's something to consider. His number one target getter was Sanders, and Debo Samuel had 81 targets. Sanders, I think it was Emmanuel Sanders, had 97 targets. Debo Samuel, 81 that year, okay? 97 targets was his number one wide receiver, we're looking at Devontae Adams, who had 180 targets last year. Jimmy Garoppolo is not a high volume to receiver kind of guy. Okay? I, I don't, again, could he do well? Possibly. Could he constantly feed Adams? Possibly. They've got Renfro. They've got other crappy receivers there. That's the advantage, right? They don't really have another guy there, right? So they drafted, I believe, Mike Mayer. They've got some options, but... Adams should be a beneficiary, but either way, 10th season, pinnacle year, downgrade at quarterback, it's enough for me to deter. Now, before I started this show, I said some of these guys may not bust. If I'm looking at him, I think Devontae's still a safe play. I'm just not drafting him. There's a there's warning flags saying there could be something going wrong here, and I've given you the reasons, okay? Coming at number four, let's, get, let's throw in a quarterback here. 
it's Lamar Jackson, who's sitting number four amongst quarterbacks, who I think was completely overpaid. He's like the number one paid quarterback right now per on a year basis, right? He's getting paid more than Jalen Hurts, which is absolutely ludicrous. This guy's coming off around four to five. He is ahead of guys like I like way better than him, which are Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert, right? At quarterback. Lamar Jackson has only played 12 games the past two seasons, 12 and 12. Has not finished the past two seasons. That reason alone, that reason alone, I'm going to avoid him, okay? Now you're saying, well, Joe, I get a lot of rushing yards. They've upgraded his receiving core. They brought in some great targets. Odell, blah, 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 blah. He's he's already come out and said that he's going to throw more, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can't teach a dog new tricks. I mean, it's hard, right? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's the old saying, right? Is that the saying? Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. I mean, he's in his own he's in his own system. He knows his ways. He is a running quarterback. He puts himself at risk. He runs. He gets hurt. It's just he doesn't have the build that a Jalen Hurts does. He doesn't have the build that a Josh Allen does. He's a lanky, you know, skinny quarterback. He like skinnier, right? He's just not built like the uh, the quarterback that the, the the quarterbacks that I like, like a Jalen Hurts, right? Uh, even Mahomes, right? A little more robust, a little stronger. Lamar Jackson again. Past, uh, what is it? Past three years has not thrown over 3,000 yards. Well, Joey makes it up with the rushing. Yeah, but rushing leads to injury. I, I'm just not sold on it. Either way, guys, I've given you the reasons. Has not finished the past two seasons. Has not thrown over 3,000 yards the past three seasons. For me, I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm gone. I'm not drafting him. Don't trust him. I let, the, let Baltimore pay the billions of dollars for him. I'm not not investing for fantasy, okay? Number five here, let's rip through these a little faster. Some of these guys I've mentioned before, including this guy, will not touch Travis Etienne. Reason being is he's played two seasons. The first season he missed entirely, possible injury prone. When he came back and he, last year, he had the full season to himself. Now, he got some volume. He had this 220 what attempts he did. Still didn't finish as a top five running back or a top 10 for that matter, okay? This is a guy that literally is coming off in the second round as late as the third and has not had the opportunity to wow us last year and didn't. And what really turns me off is he had a game is in PPR 0.3 points, didn't even catch a reception. And he had two games, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, week four and 14. I don't have the stat in front of me. I've got notes, but I don't have, the, I didn't write that stat. There was two games. He had 3.2 points PPR in those two games. Unacceptable unacceptable if you can give me three games where you completely bust and you're supposed to be my rb1 unacceptable that's a no for me and there's a bunch of other games he had like eight points and seven points it was just disgusting it was very inconsistent he had a couple of good games don't trust it and then they come in and draft tank bigsby in the third round you don't draft a running back in the third round if you're not going to use him especially around that goal line tank bigsby will be used tanks bigsby, bigsby can be the one i'm not sold at atn no for me he is a bust. Don't trust him. Number six here, and this guy is J.K. Dobbins. Let's talk about him real quick. Round four ADP. Let's quickly give you a quick rundown of him. Now, what people are telling you, what the Kishis are telling you is go zero RB, load up on wide receivers, and have J.K. Dobbins as your RB1. No. No, 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 no. This is the problem if you wait on running back and you don't get a top five <clears throat> a top 10 potential running back is because you run into guys like J.K. Dobbins and then you try to make him your RB1. I saw a guy do a draft. Someone sent me a, I think it was an Insta, Insta Reel or something like that on a page that I blocked years ago. I don't even know who this guy is. Um, I was able to view it. He actually screen recorded it and he went zero RB. His running backs, I think, were like Madison and Brian Robinson. Those were like his two. I mean, Madison could be viable. I'm just not sold on him being the RB1 fully and truly very very possible but but either way like you're taking a big risk by making jk dobbins and brian robinson and guys like that your rb1 and two i just i don't trust it right and so jk dobbins just for the fact that he hasn't been able to stay healthy i mean he 2020 he played 15 games had a decent rookie season missed the entire 2021 season didn't play tore knee and then in 2022 eight games I did some math here. I think he played like, I think there's about, I think 17, let's say 17 uh, games per season, 51 games, let's say. Okay, 51, 52 games. He only played 23 out of the possible 50 some odd games. Okay, he hasn't even played half. 
don't trust them. And people are saying, let make them your RB1. Draft them in the fourth round after you go zero RB. Load up your wide receivers. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Number seven here, DJ Moore. Don't trust him at all. Um, don't trust the situation there. Um, you know, he's on the Bears with Fields. Don't trust him. Last year, Fields' number one target getter was Chase Claypool, who had 79 targets, who's out modeling in France right now with really ugly clothing and a, and, a, and a male purse. I don't know what it was. It was some sort of purse. Really strange outfit that Claypool's wearing right now. That's a whole other topic. Um, yeah. Besides the fact, Chase Claypool, 79 targets last year, right? And that was his number one receiver for Fields. And Mooney had 61 targets, right? So when I look at DJ Moore, he's had like three 1,000-plus yard receiving seasons. He's never been outstanding. He's been good. He's sitting 20th on the consensus amongst running backs. I, I, amongst wide receiver, <clears throat> wide receiver, sorry. He's sitting ahead of London, Drake London, Calvin Ridley, Christian Watson, Deontay Johnson, Jerry Judy. And he's got a guy in Justin Fields whose top target getter was Chase Claypool, who peaked at 79. I Again, I don't trust the situation. I don't. And people are drafting this guy thinking he's a true wide receiver one. Don't trust it. I, I, I don't. I'm staying away from DJ Moore. I've stayed away from DJ Moore every single year. I've done well. He's busted on his ADPs multiple years. Don't trust him. Okay. Number eight here, Miles Sanders. Now, guys, I don't know how to put this to you delicately. The guy's not that good. Now, he had a good season last year, finished 15th amongst running backs. Team change. He's on Carolina. They're sharing the backfield with Chuba. Chub, 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 Chuba Hubbard. Um, yeah, I mean, you got a rookie quarterback coming in who's going to have his share of rushing attempts. You know, you got a totally young offense, different team. He switched over to a new team. Again, uh, round four ADP, very expensive for a guy. Finished 15th last year on a good offense, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't trust this at all. I'm, I'm just going to stay away. I don't trust. I don't think Miles Sanders is a good running back. The team changed. The young quarterback, the shared backfield with Hubbard, who's been there longer. Yeah, I'm going to stay away. I, I mean, those are reasons enough. Like, you should be going top-heavy running back that you don't need to look at guys like Miles Sanders and J.K. Dobbins, you know, at these ADPs, all right? Uh, number nine here, I told you last year, DeAndre Swift, stay away. Stay far away. I'm telling you to stay away. Again, he's still coming off rounds four to five. The Kinshipses have no shame, yet they are. You know what's funny? Have you ever seen that old Homer picture where Homer Simpson's kind of like backing up into a bush, and he's like standing there, and then it's the second frame he's back, and then the third frame, and then the fourth frame he's all the way back in the bush, guys. I'm actually emphasizing it right now on the uh, on the podcast here. He's kind of all the way back in the bush. That's what they do. That's what they're doing with DeAndre Swift. They're they're just kind of like back in the bush. Like we made a mistake, but we're not going to admit it. We're just going to rank him lower. He still rounds four to five. He's sharing a backfield with Kenneth Gainwell and Rashad Penny, who both absolutely suck as well, just as much as DeAndre Swift. It's a disaster backfield. Uh, Eagles were dead bast, uh, dead bast, <laughs> bast, dead last bast. Is that even a word like base? No, no. Anyway, uh, yeah, dead last in RB targets last year. They just don't throw a lot to their RBs. It's a suspect situation to say the least. Just stay away from DeAndre Swift. I There's no, the risk is just not worth the reward that would probably never happen anyway. Yeah, the Kinshipses are embarrassed about this. They have not apologized. And I would be too if I told you to draft him as a top eight running back last year and he sucked as bad as he did. So yeah, no. Okay, no, no, no Swift, no Penny, nothing, all right? Last guy here, before I get into this one, it's an important one. Make sure you guys do get the 16-round draft solution and go get that digital draft board at fandraft.com forward slash FFC. FFC10 is the code. Get the digital draft board. You'll be very happy with it, guys, and grab the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. All right, Keenan Allen is the last one here. Keenan Allen is going to bust. Played 10 games last year. Entering his not first, second, third. Want me to go through this again the same way I did with Adams? His 11th season. He's had his share of years where he's missed a lot of time. The Chargers just, just don't go out and spend a first-round pick on Quinton Johnson to use him on the bench. He's going to be the, the wide receiver one. 
Keenan Allen time is done. And this is what I don't get, right? When Jefferson came in to the Vikings, everyone kind of faded Thielen, right? Or they took a while, but eventually caught on that Thielen was fading out. Why aren't they catching on that Quentin Johnson is easily going to take the job away from Keenan Allen? Keenan Allen's not that good, guys. He was never an amazing wide receiver. He was a good wide receiver, but never outstanding. And then you can talk about Mike Williams, his counterpart, who can't stay on the field to save his life. Yeah, man, no. He finished 41st last year amongst wide receivers. Keenan Allen did. Sitting number 15 amongst wide receivers this year in the third round. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. Let some idiot take him because I'm not touching him, all right? There you have it, guys. Ten players that could potentially bust and really good reasoning on why. I mean, we went through some data and we cross-referenced the quarterback stolen to the wide receivers, how they did with other wide receivers, their peak target count. There's a lot of data in this video, guys. Go back, listen to it again if you need to, or just take my advice and stay away from these guys. Draft someone better. Who to draft? All laid out for you guys in the 16-round draft solution. Secure the solution, secure the championship, guys. Linked it below. We'll talk soon, guys. I'm going to keep the content rolling. Big surprises coming your way. We will talk soon, guys. And maybe you'll see Connor that can sheep us very soon, if you're lucky. We'll talk soon, guys. Subscribe, thumbs up. I'm out.